So just give me five minutes to talk to this artist. Sorry about that. No. Uh, hi, Nigel. All right. Okay, mate. I only have a few minutes to go over these boards before I get called into casting. Um, ready? Yeah, yeah. I got my, my trusty notebook handy. Ready okay, go. good. I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, for okay. the first shot, we're tracking left to right, following the actor running through the forest. It's nighttime and the rain is coming down really hard. We finish the tracking shot as she comes upon the entrance to a cavern and stops dead. Okay, just a, a really... Next shot, we cut to a high angle, looking down on her as it, we reveal that something is watching her from the rocks above. It's, uh, let's make that a, a kind of a dirty shot. We don't quite exactly know what we want to do here, so draw the lower half of some scary-looking creature in the shadow, okay? Okay, so... When you say... Perfect. So now we cut to a close-up of our scared girl breathing heavily, the rain's pouring down, and she doesn't know what the hell to do. She's looking around desperately, and that's when we pan right to reveal the pitch-black opening to a cavern. Should I go in? Excuse me? That's what she's thinking, son. Try and keep up, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um... Sorry, so now we, we switch to a follow shot from behind her as she goes into the cavern and disappears into the darkness. You got that? I, I think so. Just and then to... one final boom up to a medium close up of the creature's legs walking out among the rocks. Mm. Okay. Are you with me? I, I believe so. I okay, just... great. Listen, uh, I've got to run. Uh, good luck, mate. Uh, we'll talk soon, okay? Okay, thank you. Aside from his accent, is simply hearing these terms the director rattled off to me made you feel a bit stressed and anxious? Please don't worry as I'm about to break down all of these shots and show you how to properly storyboard each one. Welcome everyone to Beyond the Process, I'm Lance Laspina, and with over three decades of experience having storyboarded films, video games, and commercials, I've had to learn how to properly indicate all of the various types of shots in the filmmaking process. Okay, now let's jump into each shot as quickly as Nigel was spelling them out at me. First, I'm going to replay what he said and then I'll explain each shot afterwards. For the first shot, we're tracking left to right, following the actor running through the forest. The first type of shot Nigel mentions is a tracking shot, which means the camera is literally following the movement of the character and keeping them in frame the entire time. Now, I just want to point out that the real sticklers to the rule were often referred to as side-to-side -side tracking, as is in the case here, as what's known as a trucking shot. Whereas when the camera is either following behind a character or leading them from the front, it's referred to as a tracking shot. Honestly, to me, it's just a case of semantics as the two terms can be used interchangeably without confusing anyone. But now it's time to see how I personally storyboard a tracking shot. I place two directional arrows, in this case pointing left to right, on the edges of the frame's borders. Usually when arrows are actually touching the frame, this indicates it's a camera move, whereas when arrows appear within the frame's borders, that usually indicates character movement. Next shot, we cut to a high angle, looking down on her, as it, we reveal that something is watching her from the rocks above. It's, uh, let's make that a, a kind of a dirty shot. A dirty shot always includes a visual element like a person's head or shoulder that's out of focus in the immediate foreground, while the main subject can be seen in the background. Now, it doesn't always have to be a body part. It could very well be anything like uh, a rock or a plant in this case. To help make this more clear, Let's take a look at some reasons why a director may choose to use a dirty shot. To establish spatial relationships between characters. To add visual interest and variety to a shot's composition. To emphasize the presence of another character without fully showing them. 
Lastly, a dirty shot can be used to help guide the audience's attention to what the director wants you to see by filling part of the screen with something out of focus, naturally directing our eyes to what is in focus. So in this example, we can see that not just the creature's body is causing the shot to be dirty, but also the plants and rocks in the foreground. Together, they not only reveal that something is watching her, but they also help direct your eye to the real center of attention, that being the female lead character down below. Before moving on, I have one really quick ask. If you guys are enjoying this content and find it helpful, please consider supporting us by subscribing to our channel, giving a like to this video, and sharing our content with a friend. Shane and I have been working hard to grow this channel and could really use your support. So thank you very much. Okay, now back to the video. She's looking around desperately, and that's when we pan right to reveal the pitch black opening to a cavern. Next, the director wants to pan the camera from the lead character over to the right to reveal what she's seeing. A pan, which is an abbreviated term for the word panorama, is a type of movement in which the camera rotates horizontally to either the right or the left. It does so on a fixed vertical axis and is usually in a fixed position, either mounted on a tripod or perhaps handheld by an operator. Now, admittedly, I can be a bit nitpicky when it comes to the definition of the word pan, as people tend to use this term rather loosely to describe a myriad of camera moves. So for example, someone might say something like, uh, and then we pan up to reveal the character's face when they really should have used the term tilt instead. Panning is left and right, tilting is up and down. Okay, rant out of the way, <laughs> let's move on. There's also another type of movement referred to as the whip pan, which is essentially just a super fast pan. This is often used for comedic effect by such directors as Wes Anderson in his movies. In the case of our storyboard, the camera is slowly panning right to reveal what the character is looking at, that being the ominous opening to the cavern. As you can see from these two examples, I indicate a pan between two continuous frames by placing a large arrow pointing in the direction of the pan on each frame. I also include the word pan within the arrows so there's no confusion as to what type of camera move this is. Now we switch to a follow shot from behind her as she goes into the cavern and disappears into the darkness. A follow shot is a type of tracking shot which we looked at earlier. It's just a more specific way to describe exactly what the camera's doing instead of using the more generic tracking term, which encompasses a much wider range of camera movements. Because these terms are so interchangeable, I don't want you to stress about using them incorrectly, as similar to the trucking versus tracking debate, everyone will still understand exactly what you mean, regardless of which term you use. The precise definition of a follow shot is a specific camera angle where the camera seemingly pursues the subject while maintaining a relatively constant distance. Usually the camera angle is directly behind a character or object that is moving forward, but it can also be in front of the character leading them as they walk towards the camera. Now let's take a look at the storyboard for this shot. As you can see, the camera is positioned directly behind our female lead and I indicate that we're following behind her by using arrows pointing inward on all four corners. For those savvy viewers out there who watched my last video, you'll recognize I use the same technique to indicate a camera push-in. Essentially, a follow shot is the same thing as a push-in, but now we have a character moving within the frame at the same pace as the camera, and that's where they differ. And then one final boom up to a medium close-up of the creature's legs, walking out among the rocks. Lastly, Nigel wants the camera to boom up the side of the rocky cliff to where the creature is standing. Simply put, a boom shot, also sometimes referred to as a crane shot, is a type of camera movement in filmmaking where the camera is mounted on a mechanical arm or crane, called a boom, that allows it to move vertically up or down, as well as left and right. Among other things, they can be used for introducing characters, showing action sequences, or revealing large spaces. So in the case of this scene, we are booming upwards to slowly reveal the position of the creature we saw earlier framed in the dirty shot. We first see his feet, 
and then more of his lower torso as he turns and walks into an opening among the rocks before we get a chance to see his face. The way I indicate a boom shot is almost identical to how I indicate a tracking shot, only this time the arrows are either pointed up or down on the sides of the frame as opposed to left or right. Once again, I make sure that the arrows are touching each side of the border so it distinguishes it as a camera movement. It's as simple as that. Now, if you happen to miss my last video in the series on how to properly storyboard camera movement both towards and away from the subject, then you want to check out this video right over here. Before I go, I want to send a special shout out to director Nigel Crampton for allowing me to record my call with him today. I'm really looking forward to seeing exactly what he does with my boards. Now, if you guys also enjoyed Nigel and would like to see more of him in the future, let me know in the comments. I really appreciate everyone watching until the end of this video and I hope you found it useful. Be sure to join me again in the future when I tackle even more types of shots and teach you how to properly storyboard them. See you next time.